Dan, let's go back to, I feel kind of bad, Dan. I just want to mention that um, I didn't know uh, until I re- kind of reconnected with you in 2019. Just a lot of good people. Like, for example, Father Karapi is a friend of mine. Uh, he used to go around and give his testimony from one place to another. Now, after I understand the depth of the liver crystal method to heal somebody, uh, to heal the imagination and the mind, it wasn't a good thing for Father Karapi to walk around, to go around the country giving his testimony and, and talk about the dark, deep things that he was doing before he was a priest from one parish to another. Same, same thing, Zachary King, other people that I know that, that go from one venue to another and they're talking about, I was this and I was that and I used to do this and I did it this way and I used to do this mortal sin and they go from one, one place to another doing that. Dan, I just found out that's not good. I didn't know that. Okay, and so my intellect's been purified by reconnecting with you as well. Now, it, it doesn't mean that you can't share your witness, but it, it has to be very general, Dan. You have to, you kind of like St. Paul. I mean, look at St. Paul's witness. You know, he, he says, uh, you know, I was, I was uh, a sinner. I encountered Christ on the road to the to Emmaus, and this is who I am now. Saint Paul doesn't go into detail, like, yeah, I had, you know, I had, I had a part in killing uh, uh, Saint Stephen. Uh, I was whacking, you know, Christians over in, in in this city and that city, and arresting them in chains and beating them up with clubs. He didn't. He doesn't go into any details. He just says that he was a sinner, the chief of sinners. He encountered Christ. And who he is now. So, Dan, am I am I onto something? I mean, again, uh, I think a lot of Catholics, none of us really realize how dangerous it is when when you have a good Catholic who in, means well, and you got him going from one parish to another, telling them deep dark secrets of the past. And and, and people in the audience, they want to hear that. It's they might they want to hear more of the phenomena, uh, but it's not good for the soul who's saying that. Am I onto something, Dan? Yeah, I think I, I think so. I mean, I think it, we need to give. Uh, um, you know, a testimony, but that word testimony, the Greek word is martyroi, right? Our ultimate testimony is is the way we live our lives, and, and, and it could be a white, our, probably not not a bloody martyrdom, but a white martyrdom, and focusing again on Christ. This is why we always say, this is what Kyle uh, has coined, that the demon is tertiary in Catholic liberation. Can't talk too much about the demon and glorify the demon or glorify sin. So, uh, going back to the original segment, I want to just put an, an image out there on on um, uh, for for custody of the imagination, particularly with the young. Um, there was a um, um, this might even have been Zig Ziglar. Uh, you mentioned him earlier. This might have been from Zig. Um, he talks about how bank tellers are are uh, how they how they learn how to tell counterfeit bills, um, and, and they still need the human principle. Because some of those counterfeit bills can even fool technology, but the human touch, the human feel, the human instinct is very good. So they, when they train bank tellers how to discern a good bill from a bad bill, they never let the trainee, they never let their virginal fingers touch a bad bill. And after they've completed their training, they'll start wor- working in a bad bill, and so that, so it'll immediately smell it out. And this is this is what I think. Uh, parents, uh, uh, when you're when you're teaching your children, keep this image in mind. It's not that you're repressing and and they're not going to eventually have to deal with this. Because I've heard this. Oh man, why do you you should just let your kids watch, you know these these horror movies because they're going to see it anyway someday. The idea is when they're age appropriate and you've and you've perfected their dis- or at least worked on their discernment, they can tell clean from unclean, the good from the phony, and and then quickly reject it. So, so that's, that's part of it. And also Jess, it's, it's, it's the part of the custody of the, of the mind is the disappropriation. I talk about this in the book, how to dip, disappropriate the memory from the emotion. And how do we do that? It, it's a willful act. It's a willful act. Uh, um, and the way I encourage people is to find somewhere on the sacred triduum that they can apply their suffering wherever they're, wherever they're at. You know, a lady was upset recently when I was, 15 years old or 12 years old, a priest yelled at me in the confessional and I, and you know, and I, it really messed me up. And, and, you know, and I said, well, you were yelled at and that's the emotional event for you. And you still remember it 50 years later. So, so what are you going to do with that? Right. What are you going to do with that somewhere? So you're telling me a religious leader yelled at you and embarrassed you in front of other people. 
Is there any time in the tribunal of Jesus Christ that the religious leaders yelled at him, ridiculed him, told him to get his crap together, threatened him, uh, shamed him? So finding that emotion and, and linking it to the, the tritum is very important for the disappropriation. And part of that is, is um, what modern psychologists, one modern psychologist coined a phrase called, if you can name it, you can tame it. Grasp that emotion because the disordered emotion attracts the demon. The disordered emotion attracts the demon. High emotionality attracts the demon. Being able to name it and tame it. That's not just psychological. We can tame it. If we can name it, where do we take it? We take that sucker. We find the, we find the defect that's pushing that emotion, whatever it is, you take it right to the confession box and you tame it through sacramental grace. And then you tame it by developing virtue through penance, by making a satisfaction for the sins associated with that. This is the Catholic response to traumatic events that will eliminate the demon, at least mitigate what the demon can do in his work against you. Dan, and this is this is everything in liberation. I mean, uh, once once you take custody of the imagination, custody of the mind, uh, yeah, because once once again. You know, as we, as you well know, that demons they traffic in the senses, and uh, and and they they especially in in oppression or obsession, they're now starting to, uh, you know, do this uh, running, constant narrative, you know, in the person's mind, and so if the person doesn't gain a little bit, pursue self mastery by the practice of, 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 you know, discipline and meditative prayer, uh, this, uh, this ends up driving a lot of people to suicide. This, this, uh, unfettered, uh, you know, tra- trafficking of the senses from the diabolic, this drives people to incredible depression. They, they lay in a fetal position in their bedroom. They can't get out. They can't even get it. They can't even find a job or they can't even work. They can't hold relationships. I mean, so this, this, this entire, uh, you know, this, uh, this, uh, trafficking in the senses, this is serious. It, it beats down a person into nothing. It, 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 they become again, just basically, uh, you know, rolled up in a fetal position in the corner of the room. 